by the end of this video, when we move our froggy over to a new zone and we press save in our settings, close our game down, you can see, oh, by default, he's in the middle and he's in the town. But I just saved. Shouldn't he be over in the forest, not in that place? Oh, he is in the forest. We're going to learn to save our game state. We're going to be saving this to a JSON like this, exactly like this is what I just saved and loading it on game start. And we're gonna be storing our player position and our map boundary. Since in our tutorial, we're using boundaries for our different zones like this. This type of save system should work for any type of data you have in your game. So don't worry if you're not actually following this tutorial, it should still work for you. So cool, let's take a look. So in our previous video, we added the UI in for our menu. So when we press tab, our menu pops up. I added in a tab for settings, and this is where I'm gonna put our save button. So. Over in our hierarchy, I have a UI game object, which if I expand, I have our menu game object, which if I expand, <laughs> and then we have our pages. On our settings page, if I expand this, you can see the little title text. And if I enable this, I'm also gonna right click on settings page, go UI and add a button. I'm gonna call this save button. I'll make it a bit bigger by changing the height to 100 and the width to 200. And if I expand save button on the side here, we can see the text that's within our button. I'm just gonna rename this to save and I'm gonna change the font to our custom font that we set up in our last video. So cool, if you're not following the tutorial, you can just add a basic save button to your game anywhere you want it to be. So now we're gonna want a save controller script. We're gonna need this script to live somewhere on a game object that's always active in our game. Our settings page gets deactivated when the tab isn't active. Instead, what I'm gonna do is right click on our hierarchy and create a new object, which I'm going to call our game controller. So on this game controller, I'm going to click add component and go new script and call it our save controller. Now, just before we open this up, I'm also going to go into our assets folder and right click and go create C sharp script and add another new script called save data. This save data script is going to be the model for all the data we want to save. So let's work on this first by double clicking on this file to open up. And for our save data, we don't want this to be mono behavior as we're just going to be using this as a class to define our data model. And as we're going to be saving to JSON, I'm going to type at the top above public class save data, some square brackets and type system dot serializable. Having things serializable means that you can pack and unpack data to a text-based format, which is what we're gonna do by saving things to JSON. So as this is just a data model, we don't need this start or update function. And instead, we're just gonna define the data we want. So like I said, we're gonna keep it simple and store our public vector-free player position. And if this is an open world game you're making and you're not using map boundaries like I am, you don't have to do this next bit. But if in your game you have camera boundaries that lock you to an area, and then when you move to another area, you move to the next boundary, what we're gonna want is a public string map boundary. And here I'm actually gonna be storing the name of the boundary for our map. So for me, I have things like T1 for my town and F1 for my forest area. Doesn't look like a forest, there's no trees, but you get what I mean. Field area perhaps, not forest, but cool. So in our save data, that's all we're gonna need. For now, as I go through this tutorial some more, we're gonna be adding our inventory. So we're gonna add inventory saving here. But with this tutorial, you can add any data type you want in here, as long as it can be serialized. So let's go back to Unity. And on our game controller, we can now double click on our save controller script. So we're gonna want one variable at the top, which is gonna be a private string for our save location. And in our start, we'll define this save location. So let's go save location equals, and you can store this wherever you want for your game, but I'm gonna use path.combine, and we'll have to hover over this and click using system IO to get path to work, and then pass in the brackets application.persistentdatapath, comma, and then this will be the name of your JSON that you want. So I'm just gonna name mine the same as our data file, which is savedata.json. If you want to know where this save location ends up being, you can put a breakpoint on here, click the play button where it says attach to Unity, and back in Unity, when you press play, we'll hit our breakpoint. We can step over once, pressing F10 or clicking the step over button. And if you hover over save location, you'll see where our data gets saved. Like I said, you can make this wherever you want, but this is just the common place used by a lot of Unity developers. So we'll stick it here as well. Next, we're not gonna need this update function, but we are gonna want a function to save our game. We're gonna want this to be a public void save game. And we're gonna want this public so that our button can call this. And in our save game, I'm gonna go save data, calling our save data file we've just written. I'll name this save data. And we'll say equals new save data, then curly brackets, 
and now we'll initialize what this save data needs to be. So inside our save data, we want something for our player position, which I'm going to get by calling game object dot find game object with tag, not game objects, but game object without the S. And then I'll pass in player. For this to work for you, make sure that in Unity, if you select your player game object, you have got the player tag on it. This should be a default in the list of Unity's tags. And at the end of this, I'll type dot transform dot position. Then we'll type a comma at the end and add in our map boundary. So for this, like I said, I'm going to grab the name of our map boundary. And this time I'm going to go find object of type Cinemachine Confiner as currently in Unity. On our Cinemachine camera, we have a Cinemachine Confiner attached, which is what controls our boundary. And what I'm going to do is grab this bounding shape 2D from here and then grab the name. So let's do that in the script. So Cinemachine Confiner, and we need to import in using Cinemachine at the top. Then we'll say dot m bounding shape 2d dot game object dot name this grabs the name from our actual unity game object that is in our bounding shape 2d so again if we look at our cinema machine bounding shape 2d you can see we've got the polygon collider from t1 which as i showed before in our map bounds we've got t1 which is our town and then f1 which is our forest or field <laughs> Oh, I need a semicolon at the end there. That's my save data all set up. Now we need to write this to a text file. So to do this, you type file dot write all text, then brackets, pass in your location. So save location. And now we're gonna wanna make this save data object into JSON. So we're gonna call JSON utility dot to JSON brackets and pass in our save data. Cool, and that's all you need to do to get this saving. Now let's get our data loading. So let's write another function of a public void load game. For loading the game, we want to check if our file dot exists in our save location. So do we have a save file currently? And I'm actually going to do if we don't have a save file first. So if we don't have a save file in our location, all we have to do is call save game. And this will save our game for us and create a new file. This means that whatever your game's defaults are when it starts up is going to be the initial save point. Cool, so now if we do have a save file, we're going to want to grab that save data. So let's make a new object, save data, and say equals JSON utility from JSON. And if you do a triangle bracket, you can pass in your type, which is going to be save data. And this is going to try and convert the JSON in that file to fit into this object of save data. So then we do brackets and pass in our file dot read all text and then in here you pass in your save location so read that file in that save location now depending on what you're saving this is where you do basically the opposite of our save game where here we grabbed and saved our player position what i'm going to do is copy this game object find game object with tag player transform position copy that section and paste it and instead of taking that value we're going to set that value by saying equals save data dot player position. Now the map boundary one's a little trickier. So with this, we're going to do the same as above and say find object of type Cinemachine confiner point to our M bounding shape 2D. This time we're going to say equals and try and find the game object that this name has saved from. So because we saved it by the name, we're going to use this name to search for it. And that's where it needs to be a unique ID. Otherwise, we're just going to grab the first one it finds. So we're going to say game object dot find save data dot map boundary. Then outside the brackets, we'll go dot get component. And we actually want to grab the polygon collider 2D from that, since that's what fits in our bounding shape 2D. And then your load game, you could add this to a button as well in your game. I'm not going to do that for now. All I'm going to do is go to our start function. And when this starts, I'm just going to call load game. So the first time we run this, we're not going to have anything in this save location. So it's going to go through load game and save a new game for us. If I stick a breakpoint on this save game and press play, I'll show you this file popping up. So let's go back to Unity. And if I press play, we can see we hit our breakpoint. I'm going to grab this save location and I can paste this in my file explorer. Get rid of the little quote marks and delete this slash slash save data dot JSON. So we just go to this folder. You can see right now this folder is empty. If we step over and check this folder again, we've now got save data JSON. I'll open this up in Notepad. 
And you can see this is how our save is stored. Our player position is set to zero and our map boundary is T1, since that's the defaults of my game. Cool, so let's hook up our save to a button so we can actually make this change. So I'm gonna stop our debugger and back in Unity on our UI. I'm gonna click on our save button inside our settings page and scroll down to the bottom where we can see on click. We're gonna click the plus button to add an event. And then from our hierarchy, dragging game controller into this none object slot, click on the drop down of no function, go to save controller, and then you can see our save game function in here. If you wanted to make a load game, you'll do this exactly the same way, just make a load game button. So we'll click this, press play. Now, if we move our little froggy around, let's go into the next zone. Let's move him over into the corner or something. Cool, that's good enough. Press tab, settings, and click save. If I now check in our notepad, it says, oh, this file is being modified by another program. Let's reload it. You can see now we've got a new X and Y position and our map boundary has changed to F1. So if I close our game down and you can see by default, he's in the middle and in the town. When I press play, we start back to where we saved. Cool, it's working. That's it, <laughs> you did it. <laughs> hopefully that all makes sense and hopefully this can help you with your future games. If you want to grab these scripts or this whole project for yourself, it's all on my Patreon for only £5. Wow, that's really cheap. So I'll link that below. Otherwise, I hope you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video, which is going to be our inventory system, or at least the beginning of it. We're going to get the UI down for our inventory. And I think that episode after that, we'll look at saving and loading our inventory state. So that's cool. Very exciting. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.